Hello everyone, Scott Friesen here from Simpletivity, and I am so excited to be with you here as a part of ProdCon 2019, the very first ProdCon. Now, some of you may already know my content from the Keep Productive channel. I've guest posted a number of times talking about my favorite productivity tool, Trello. Or perhaps you're a subscriber or have seen my content on the Simpletivity channel. Now, I cover a large number of productivity tools and apps, but when it comes to my absolute favorite piece of technology, I would have to say it is Trello. It's just such a flexible tool. So today, I wanna to share with you many of my favorite tips when it comes to using this fantastic project manager, uh, group collaboration tool, even just a personal to-do list. You can use Trello for so many different things. So whether you're a brand new user to Trello, or maybe you're just evaluating the software, or you may be a seasoned veteran of Trello, I can guarantee you're gonna learn something new as a part of today's presentation. So let's jump in. All right, so I wanna get started with some really quick wins. Whether, again, you're a new user or a seasoned veteran, I wanna get started with some shortcut keys and ways that you can quickly input and change information within Trello. So let's start with something that was just introduced actually within the past year, something that you may not have been aware about, and that is adding a card exactly where you want to. Uh, traditionally, you have to go to the end of a list and select this add another card. And that may be fine in this case where I have a short list, but what if you have a very, very lengthy list? You don't wanna be scrolling all the way down to the bottom to add another card. So what you can do now is you can take your cursor and actually double click in between the cards where you'd like that new card to be. So let's say that I want my new card to be in between these two. I'm I'm gonna put my cursor in between, double click, and now I can enter in that new card right away. Let's do that one more time. Maybe I want it over here, just above this one with the image. I'm gonna double click, and now I can enter in that card exactly where I want it to go. But let's go to our keyboard and learn some of the most, not just the most popular shortcuts, but what I feel are the most useful shortcuts. Now there's a large number of shortcuts, just like with many other applications. But what I love about most of the shortcuts within Trello is that so many of them are single key shortcuts. You don't need to be pressing Alt this or Control that or Shift this for most of them. So let's take a look at some of my favorite shortcuts. Cut. So let's stick with adding a new card. I already showed you how to do that by double clicking in between, but an easier way by using your keyboard is by selecting N on your keyboard, N as in new, wherever you want that card to be. And what's gonna happen if I hover over this card here, and if I select N on my keyboard, it's gonna enter in a new card directly below it. So let's say I wanna have one just below this card right here, I'm gonna select an N on my keyboard, and now I can start entering in that brand new card. Very quick, a very fast way, and maybe even a bit better than that first tip I showed you. You don't have to find that little tiny space in between. All right, another shortcut key that I love is D, and D stands for date. Um, sometimes we have to, you know, we have to click on the card first, that's one click, then we need to come over here and select due date to get to this little pop-up menu to change the date or to add a due date. Well, there's a much easier way to do so, and it's even faster than selecting uh, this little quick edit here. That's another way of doing it, but it's gonna take you at least two clicks to get there as well. If I hover over this card and I select the letter D, Boom, immediately that calendar comes up and I can start editing or changing that date. Over here, I wanna add a due date to this one. Select D on my keyboard and let's select that date there and hit save. So a very, very fast way to get that calendar up when you're wanting to make changes. Uh, now, another one that is very, very useful as a, as a part of our keyboard shortcuts is the letter Q. Now, what the letter Q does is it allows you to see just the cards which are assigned to you. Now, you may already be familiar with the filter capability here within Trello. If we go to the menu and select filter cards, I can come down here 
and select just myself, right? I can just say, well, I just wanna see what's going on with me, right? What are all the cards that are assigned to me right now? Filtering is very, very powerful. And in fact, when I consult with individuals and organizations on how to use Trello uh, in a more effective manner, I'm often surprised at how seldom teams and people are using filtering within Trello. So make sure that you're using filtering as a part of your Trello experience. But let's take this filter off for a second. Let's see everything on this particular board. And what happens if I select Q on my keyboard? Boom! Immediately, it's that exact same function, same as filtering things that are assigned to me, but I can just toggle back and forth. I'm just selecting Q on my keyboard here, and I can instantly see the things that are just assigned to me. This is so powerful, right? Because you may be dealing with boards that you're collaborating with multiple people, like a large number of people. You may be dealing with boards that exceed more than 100 cards, maybe at any given time. Do you wanna be scrolling all the way to the right and up and down? No, select Q on your keyboard and you can get there so much faster. Now, we're not quite done with the shortcuts yet because there's a couple of more shortcuts that I wanna share with you that I think you're gonna find very, very useful. Another thing that happens when we're dealing with what cards or tasks that we're working with is we wanna be able to quickly assign ourselves or maybe unassign. Now, of course, assigning yourself makes a lot of sense. You're taking on that task or, or you'll take care of that uh, project, whatever that card represents within your board. But also depending on your workflow, you may wanna be able to quickly remove yourself from a card. Maybe you're no longer uh, involved in that task or maybe a part of completing that task is that you remove yourself. Well, again, you don't wanna be clicking on the card itself, that's one click, and then coming over here and clicking this, and you gotta close this, right? And even the quick edit, even if you come over here and say change members, multiple steps. Well, I wanna introduce you to the space bar. The space bar allows you to assign or unassign anything on this page. Let's say I wanna assign myself to everything in this list. I've got, what, about five, uh, uh, four cards here. Space, 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 space. I got it. I'm gonna do everything in that particular list. Never mind that it's labeled complete. Of course, this is a bit of a dummy board just for today's example. But isn't that fast? I'm gonna hit spacebar again and quickly I have unassigned myself to those particular cards. So spacebar, super fast, a super quick way for you to add yourself. Uh, last but not least, uh, I talked a little bit about filters already, but do you know that there's a quicker way to get to filters? And that's with the key, you guessed it, F for filters. If I select F on my keyboard, it's immediately going to bring me to the filter screen. So those are some of my absolute favorite shortcuts. If you're not yet familiar with shortcuts in Trello, it's gonna make your life so much easier and you're gonna be able to work through your cards, your lists and your boards in a much more efficient manner. Now there's a lot more shortcuts that you can learn. You can always press the question mark key on your keyboard and it's gonna bring up everything. If I, uh, if I do that right now, you'll see it's gonna bring me sort of the full list Although I'll tell you, some of the ones that I just suggested, some of the ones that I just shared with you, don't even exist on this list. But this is a pretty good list. This is almost a master list, but I even threw in a few special or bonus ones which you may not have heard of before. Okay, we're done with shortcuts for a while. Let's take a look at one of my favorite power-ups and probably my favorite power-up um, of all of them, and there are now over a hundred, but that would be the custom fields power-ups. And of course, if you're not familiar with power-ups, you wanna go to your menu, come down here and select power-up you can browse the large collection of different power-ups that are available to you. But in this case, I wanna talk about custom fields because it really is probably the first power-up that I recommend people getting used to. Because no matter how you're using your boards within Trello, um, you are gonna be using or you're gonna be needing, I should say, custom fields, whether that's quantity, inventory, a quote, revenue, price, cost. Um, you wanna attach a client name. You want, you want a date field. Maybe you want a start date, not just a due date like we see in Trello. You want a start date as well. You, may, you might wanna have multiple dates, a ship date, um, you know, a contract date, whatever the case may be. 
So once the custom fields power up is enabled, uh, you have the ability, and I'm gonna open up one of the cards here that I have as an, as an example. Here you can see I have multiple custom fields. I've got a name field, a priority field. Here I can choose uh, different levels of priority. And remember, I've set this up myself. So you want more than low, medium, high? Have as many as you like. You can even color code them as you can see here. I've got a start date and I've got a quantity date. Now, if you want to edit any of these things, you don't have to go back to the power-ups menu. You can just select uh, custom fields here and you can actually start selecting them uh, or adding a new fields from directly within the card. The one thing to note is that these custom fields will apply to the entire board, not just this card, not just this list. So you want to keep that in mind, not that you have to use them on every single one of your cards, but they will be available to you or other members who have access to that board. Now, one other thing I want to show you when it comes to custom fields is that we can also sort our cards based on some of those custom fields. So at the very top in your list, you'll notice that you have more options here represented by those three dots. I'm going to select that here and we have this sort by option. Now, you may be familiar with the first three. You can sort by date created, as in newest first, um, date created as in oldest first, or the card name in terms of alphabetically, whatever you've listed that card as. But you can see in this case, because I have the custom power up enabled, I can actually sort in a few different additional ways. I can sort by quantity. Remember, that's one of my custom fields here. So I can sort by quantity, ascending or descending. I can also sort by start date because that's another one of my custom fields here. So if you have a number or a date custom field, either of those custom fields you can sort by. So let's do this by, um, uh, I don't know, let's do by quantity uh, descending. And there you can see it's quick, so quantity 65, 43, 21. It's, it's sorted everything in that list based on my custom field quantity. So you've got some additional ways in which you can uh, sort and rearrange your information here within Trello. All right, let's move on to some of my label tips. Some of the things that I want you to get familiar when it comes to labels. Now, filters are so much more powerful when you're using labels because you can quickly see all of your green labeled cards. Or maybe you want to see cards that are labeled both green and blue. Now, you can do that very easily with filtering. But let's talk about how we can add labels in perhaps a faster fashion. So the traditional method, one of two things, you can do the quick edit here and say edit labels and then you can select them here or of course we can open the card itself and select that labels button and we can select them here but what I want you to note is that this order and this layout of these six colors are always the same so green yellow orange red purple and blue that's going to be the same across all all of your boards. Now, as you can see here, you can always add text, right? You can add some helpful text to identify what do those labels mean. But in terms of this order, it's always the same. And that's what I want you to think about with this next shortcut, because not only is green the first one in the list, it also represents number one on your keyboard. Yellow is two, orange is three, and so on for the colors here in your labels. So let's go back to the high level view of our board. And let's say I wanna add a green label to this card. Well, I'm just selecting the number one on my keyboard and boom, instantly I have the green label applied. Maybe I wanna remove the green label, no problem. I'm gonna hit one again and now that label is gone. Maybe I wanna add uh, green, uh, I wanna remove the red and I'm gonna add a few more labels. Now I've just added four labels just like that. I haven't even opened up the card, but perhaps I'm familiar enough with what those labels mean, whether it's priority, whether it's department. Of course, labels can mean so many different things, but you can just use the number keys uh, on your keyboard to add 
or remove labels very, very quickly. Of course, you're gonna first need to be comfortable or get used to what those labels represent. But of course, many of us may, be, may only be using two or three labels. So that's gonna make it that much easier as you're using this within your board. Now, there's one other tip I wanna give you when it comes to label, and this is something that is almost just, just sitting under our nose or just on the tip of our tongue. I hear this request all the time in terms of, Scott, I'm using multiple labels, but I wish I could see them or I wish I, I wish I could show them to my colleagues and the people that I'm collaborating with because, you know, I created the board, but, but they're not sure what green and, and blue means. Of course, you can hover over them. This one says new project. And if I hover over this, it says HR. But you don't want to be taking your cursor and hovering over everything. What about if you clicked on them? Boom, they expand, all of them expand. Here you can see clearly that new project is green, urgent is red, client request is orange. It's bold, it's clear, it's on the front of each and every one of your cards. Now, if you wanna revert and go back, maybe this is too much, you just click on the label again and it's gonna go back to its default view. Now you should note that this is a personal view. If I go in here and I click on that label, it doesn't mean that it's expanded for everyone else on the board. In fact, if I go to other different boards, those labels are also going to be expanded. So it is personal preference. It's very easy to toggle on and off, but you may wanna share that with your colleagues or with the people that you collaborate with on Trello, because I'm sure that they're gonna find that tip very, very useful. All right, next up I wanna share with something that is a little more advanced, but something that a lot of people have been requesting. And Trello introduced this to us uh, roughly two years ago, uh, and I think there's still people who are surprised that they can do this. We wanna be able to connect and create relationships between multiple cards. I wanna show that something in this to-do list over here is maybe related to something over here in the pending list. Let's say here I've got the right year-end marketing report, and then I've got this marketing year-end review. I wanna show that there's a, a connection. Maybe they are referencing the same material. Maybe it's the same group of us that are working on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this one here. I'm gonna open up this card, and I'm gonna come down here to attachment. Now you're probably thinking, why attachment? You, you don't wanna upload a, a PDF, Scott. You don't wanna just paste in a link. No, that's, that's true. I don't wanna do either of those things. But what I do wanna do is I wanna choose attach from Trello, Trello itself. I'm gonna select that option. And what I've got here is that, first of all, it's gonna give me a preview of some of the most recent cards and boards that I've accessed. But if I don't see the one that I'm looking for here, I'm gonna start typing in uh, some keywords. And you remember, it was that marketing year-end review. So I'm gonna select that card. And what you can see now is that I actually have that card here visible to me within this uh, card, or within this card. I've got sort of a mini preview here. Now I can go one step further, rather than just having a, an attachment. This first step means it's just an attachment, but if I go down here and select connect cards, I can say relate both cards. And what's gonna happen now is I can click on it, and it shouldn't be a surprise that I'm gonna go directly to that card, which is great. But now I have the card where I just came from, right? That right year in marketing report. I can go back and forth directly from with inside that card. So you could use this for subtasks. That's one way that you can use this type of linkage or relationships. You can also go beyond and connect cards to boards. It doesn't have to be card to card. You can also create these relationships from cards to boards, maybe a, a completely different board, a completely different project. A little more advanced. It does take a few more steps, but so valuable, especially if it's helpful for you to have a preview, I mean, look at this. You've got the label, you've got the title, you've got the little helpful icons, who it's assigned to, uh, even the, the board and the list that it resides in. So you've got a lot of information in front of you here, which can be so, so helpful. All right, the next one on our list here has to do with viewing 
all of our cards. And remember, I just talked about linking cards to boards and, and other such things. Something that gets overlooked is that we can always see all of the cards that are assigned to us. All you need to do is come up to the top right-hand corner, select your profile, and then select cards. And when you select cards here, what you're going to see is all of the cards that are assigned to you. And there's a few different ways in which we can sort and also filter these cards. So you can see at the top, uh, these four cards are sorted by due date. First of all, I've got due in the next month and then these three have no due date. Uh, I'm only showing the cards from my personal boards. I could show from other boards, other team boards that I'm a part of. And I'm only showing cards active in the last month. If I select this, you can see I can filter a few different ways here. Uh, there's a variety of, of, uh, of different boards that I can look at here as well. And if I don't want to sort by due date, I can also sort by board. So in this case, I've got this board here. I can see where those three are. And I've got this separate board down below. So don't forget that you can always get to this screen. You can always see this high level view of all of your cards. I know sometimes we find it difficult with all the various things going on. You may have tried the home screen here on Trello, but this can be another very effective way to see where everything is happening, all the things that are assigned to you. All right, let's go back to my sample board for a couple of more tips just before we wrap things up. Uh, another thing that I often get asked frequently is that people like the ability to attach uh, documents, images, and those types of things uh, to cards, but you don't always want to have the image visible. So here I've got a couple of cards here where you can actually see the image depending on how you're using your boards, you can find that helpful or not. Now, if I click on this, of course, I always have the option uh, to remove the cover. That doesn't mean I'm going to delete this image. It just means if I select this option and I come back out here, uh, you will see that that image is no longer there, right? I still have the attachment there, but I won't see that uh, that cover image. Oops, I think I, I, I selected the, uh, the wrong one here. Where, there it is. So I can always make it a cover again. But if you never want to see those images for new cards that you create or other members who may have access to this board, you can go to the menu, uh, you can come down to more, and then we want to select settings. And under settings is the card cover images enable. Now, if I select this right now, it's not going to hide the ones that are already appearing there. But what it means with this unchecked is that if I upload new images to this board, it's not going to automatically show that image on the front of the card. And that may be an advantage to you. Maybe that's your desired way of working with your board. So make sure you go and toggle this or change this to the setting that is most appropriate to you. This is a board level setting, so it doesn't affect other boards, but you may want to adjust this uh, depending on how you're using that board. All right, well, the last and final tip that I wanna share with you as a part of today's presentation has to do with watching and staying on top of your tasks and staying on top of your cards. You realize already that anything that you're assigned to, it's gonna keep you subscribed. It's gonna keep you notified of what's happening with that card. But what if you just wanna keep an eye on everything in a particular list? I've seen some people assign themselves to way too many cards when it's not even them that is the owner or the one responsible for it. They just want to be notified of changes. Well, you don't have to assign yourself to all of those cards in order to be notified or to keep a watchful eye. What you can do instead is at the list here in our options, we can go down here and select watch. And if I select watch, you'll notice that there's now this little eyeball icon, which is on top of this list. And what that means is that any changes that happen within this particular list, I will be notified. It'll be as if I am subscribed or assigned to those individual cards. So maybe you have a particular workflow or a particular process, and you just wanna keep your eye on one of those particular lists or certain lists. You can do so without assigning everything there within your list. 
So I hope you enjoyed those 20 tips on how to get even more out of Trello. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Trello, I hope that you visit me at simpletivity.com or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at Simpletivity. And I hope you enjoyed the rest of ProdCon 2019. Remember, being productive does not need to be difficult. In fact, it's very simple.